A huge title unification match has been set for WrestleMania Backlash. There was a major dark match call-up on last night's SmackDown. And WWE are interested in a major indie wrestling brand. Find out what it is in a bit. So AEW was uh, the home of quite a... Uh, Divisive it was an, it was debut an this week. Interesting debut on yeah. AEW, that's for sure. Um, it was yeah. not not the usual one that we expect from AEW. Yeah. So uh, NBA or well, former NBA star Satnam Singh made his debut this week after Suzuki versus Joe. The lights went out. And then the lights come back up. Boom! He's in the ring. He's seven foot three. He's flanked he's by Jay boy. Lethal and Sanjay Dutt. It's yep. very intimidating. He takes out Joe with the bit of a dodgy looking lariat, uh, and then stands tall. But very it kind tall. of it, very it, tall. <laughs> it led to like a lot of um, uh, sort of not backlash, but just confusion around the whole thing. And you know, viewers were kind of like, "Why did you do the lights on, lights mm -hmm. off?" There were reports yesterday that me and Anna were talking about where apparently people within the actual AEW locker room were also confused about it. But Tony Khan mm -hmm. has come forward and he's appeared on Busted Open Radio uh, just to just shine some light on it, where he said that he could have done the Satnam Singh debut better. Uh, it wasn't his idea to do the lights out, but he did approve it. Uh, the idea apparently came from somebody with 30 years experience and nobody shot the idea down in the show's production meeting. So it could be any number of people. There's a lot of people. He's not throwing anyone under the bus yeah, here. Just He's just a, going, it was someone more experienced than me yeah. and they got it wrong. <laughs> I, d I, I, I could have done it better, I you know. Could, yeah. I just had time. But I, you know, I wasn't too bothered by it. I think that the lights on, lights off, maybe we're just, we've got a bit of a Pavlovian response yeah, to it. I think that's what it is. Yeah. is. We're so used to when the lights go down, we get, oh, who is it? Yeah. Who's it going to be? And when they come up, you're meant to have that big pop. And like, it was oh, just you're a, back. And it was sort of like, like, who is uh, it? <laughs> is that? Who, yeah. who is he? Um, and I guess it could have been done a lot better. If yeah. He's seven foot tall. There's no reason he needs to be sneaking up on Samoa Joe. No, he's that's just true. He could just sort her down. <laughs> yeah, go through the crowd. Imagine the, the, the sight of this seven foot tall man. Just through the emerging. crowd, yeah. it would have been so much better. And as I see, as Tony Khan has said, it could have been done better. He's admitted that. Yeah, it's just a shame they didn't didn't catch it on the night. Yeah, or anybody in the production meeting. Apparently, they all okayed it. As They're well. all fine with it. Yeah. So yeah, moving on to the WWE side of the fence now. Though we have a championship unification mm, match set for one? WrestleMania Backlash. That's right, oh, Fraser. Another, another one. one. Oh, yeah, like the like those everybody's, unification matches at the moment. Yeah, everybody's uh, kind of starting to get a bit concerned with it, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. Uh, WWE obviously unifying the WWE and Universal Championships into the uwu at wrestlemania 38 with roman reigns emerging with both belts roman then sent i believe it was last week on smackdown he issued the challenge to the usos yeah, to, them to go them. to raw yeah it's like go an expedition of gold they need to go get those titles and yeah. then boom they'll control you know the tag titles and the main titles and then i guess from there maybe we'll see them start to take other belts i don't know 24 7 they need that belt but, That's the one. Well, the match has been set, so it, it's happening at WrestleMania Backlash. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful reporting that the winner-take-all title unification match is set for Backlash when it pits the Usos against, of course, RK Bro for all four belts. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about it recently and what it could mean in terms of the long-term storytelling mm -hmm. for WWE and their long-term plans. But I, I think that, you know, while people are sort of like, oh, God, do we really want them holding all yeah. of that? Um, it could also be a slightly good thing. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting time having... I think that unifying the belts is a, is a decent idea. Like, it, yeah. the world tag belts make sense, and the mm. world main world belt makes sense. It's, yeah. And it shows how dominant the bloodline is. My only worry is that gives very little to do for other for tag everybody teams. everybody else, yeah. And we've, we've enjoyed... I've enjoyed Riddle and, mm. Mark and Randy Orton together, you know, and... I'd hate to see them lose the belts. Yeah, I, I think that there's something that can be done with it, but I, I don't think this is by any means going to end up in, you know, like floating champions and permanently yeah. unified belts. It's very much feeling like a storyline thing right now, but it mm -hmm. wouldn't surprise me if they do take them, they do unify them, and then just go on to hold them for ages. Would you think they'll give a, a purple belt? 
to the blue and the red. Oh, purple's oh, been purple sullied belt. though, hasn't it? Yeah. Purple's 205 <laughs> now. That's that's all it'll ever be yeah. forever. So following last night's SmackDown on Fox, we had a, a bit of a, a surprising debut of sorts, didn't we? Yeah, in a wee dark segment, we had... Uh... The, the surprise debut of LA Knight. Yeah. An interesting so, one because he's been, he's very popular in NXT at the moment. Yeah, we hear that WWE backstage staff writers, they're all very high on mm -hmm. him. They all really, really want him on the main roster. They, they mm -hmm. think that he's a great talker. He's a good in-ring talent. Uh, but yeah, this was it. Out he comes uh, and he's with Mace uh, and he's scheduled to be managing Mace in a match against Eric of the Viking Raiders. Mm -hmm. Now, there's apparently no word on whether this is going to be an ongoing thing i mean it's, we've it's... seen people get called up and work as a manager before yeah. and it's sort of it's really to test the waters to see how yeah. he performs and we know we we reported a few weeks back or that ellie knight was potentially going to get called up mm. as a manager so i guess this is them putting it into action yeah i i think you know if it's potentially going to be management only he's somebody who'd still be very much suited to that role mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time you kind of want to see him in the ring as well don't you but pre-match anyway uh, well first off Mace won uh, oh, Mace yeah. defeated what Eric a, what a victory <laughs> for main event Mace but, uh, but pre-match Knight uh, cut a promo on the crowd that were in attendance and he revealed Knight model management as his like the name of his new it's, group, it's, so it's, it's like really a stable. stable. Yeah, yeah. It, it it feels very um, Robert Stone. Yeah, in NXT, which I worry that they're a bit too similar characters. But I guess this is them just spitballing and trying to work mm. out what works for him. Um, I'm sure he's, he's a fantastic guy on the mic. Yeah. So I'm sure whatever whatever it will be, it will work. Yeah. Just Mace is an interesting talent to go with. I think that, you know, if, if you're looking for talent to really rebrand and get out there with a fresh coat of paint and, and mm. you know, like really get behind them, then Mace is a pretty good shout, yeah, to be yeah. honest. But, uh, you know, this could all change on a whim. It could be next week we see him pop up with a completely different stable name and now he's wrestling or whatever, because as Fraser said, the dark match segments can change, change, change. Sometimes they are literally just there to test somebody's limits. So more on it as we find out. Yeah. But... It's exciting. Yeah, exciting. exciting. But keeping it with SmackDown, though, uh, this is just a really quick one. The, we reported on this last week, but Joe Hennig, Curtis Axel, and Arya Davari, uh, they were once again backstage this week at SmackDown, continuing on with their backstage mm -hmm. producer trials. Uh, there's no word on what matches they helped produce this week, but last week, of course, Hennig produced the Sasha Live match with Tyson Kidd, and Davari produced the Drew Sammy match with Abyss. So as and when we find out... I guess we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll let you know. We'll let you know <laughs> we'll what they're I mean, they've got good folk they're working with. Tyson Kinn, the best. Yeah. Two, some of the best producers backstage at WWE. Yeah, well, and both got good minds for the business. So yeah. you've, got to, you've got to think that it'll probably flourish into some sort of beautiful, yeah. wonderful the, the relationship. The producer, Pat Box, just left. Yeah, so, yeah. exactly. But the, the more shocking news coming from SmackDown last night was uh, more role change flavoured. Yeah, it was, a bit, it was a bit of a weird one when I yeah. when I read it on paper and then I watched it and I was like, oh, okay. It works, okay. but I'm, I'm sort of like, is this a, is it an angle? Yeah. Is it what, what are we doing here? Because uh, after being drafted to SmackDown in the 2021 WWE draft and then being relegated to pretty much main event for a full yes. year until the armbar this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not done much. <laughs> Drew Gulak... Uh, popped up on SmackDown last night, but not in the role you'd expect him to be in. He wasn't wrestling at all. No. Uh, he's now part of the SmackDown interview team. So there's no confirmation on whether, as we were saying, it's intended to be a full-time position mm -hmm. or whether it's an angle or anything like that. But his first night on the job saw him conduct an in-ring with Charlotte Flair. She berated him. She got the line in saying, you know, is that why you quit competition? You know, you're a quitter. She's sort of lambasting him for giving up his career in the ring. She cuts a bit of a you people promo on the crowd as well. Uh, she orders him to leave the ring. She then attacks him from behind. Mm. She locks in the figure eight referees that have to come yeah. down to help Drew Gulak, which... It's it's considering he was, what, <laughs> Daniel Bryan's protege for yeah. a good few months and is one of 
one of the best yeah, in ring talent. One of the best in ring technicians, I'd way, say, yeah. going. But yeah, uh, referees had to come down, help, broke it all up. Uh, and then we didn't see him again until a post show little video, you know, the stuff mm -hmm. they upload online, uh, where he speaks with Megan Morant about what she thinks that he should do. He's like, oh, I think I've really messed up my knee. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's my first day. And he's all like stressed about it. He's definitely talented enough to pull it off. But is it the role we want to see Drew Gulak in? It's, it's not the role for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> the spoilers. Um, no, he, he, he did really well, though, in mm. the, the stuff he was given. And I think it was a really good segment for Charlotte to get some heat. Yeah. Like, she got major heat in that segment. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> and he... he you know, she she messed up her figure eight, and yeah. he, he really helped. He did. He, he helped, helped her out he there. Helped, he helped clean that all up. Which, I don't. I don't think the crowd really needs much reason to boo Charlotte these days. Though. I guess not. <laughs> you know, she's well, she's one of the most likable people in the company, yeah. um, and having her beat up Drew just solidified that heel status. Yeah. You know, what's he ever done? Leave him alone. We don't have many interviewers or backstage folk yeah. that can take a bump and can take a hit. But keeping it with WWE here for our last story, uh, there's rumor that they're interested in a particular massive, massive, massive deal in it's the promotion. It's a strange one. Get ready. Yeah. I, it, it, it sort of... It, it made something click when I read this. and It was like, ah, okay. Yep. But uh, Brett Lauderdale owner of GCW said on his podcast that the biggest wrestling company in the world has expressed interest in the Bloodsport brand. Control your narrative. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they've uh, obviously biggest sports uh, entertainment, big, sorry, biggest wrestling company in the world. Read into that what you will. Mm -hmm. But they've expressed interest in the Bloodsport brand. Uh, that's interesting, Meltzer says, be, uh, based on their being so public about being negative about the idea of promoting the term blood. Now, in addition to being interested in the Bloodsport brand, um, he said it, WWE doesn't exactly do shows like that, but I could I see the idea of the Library for Peacock as being something that they could use mm -hmm. to kind of entice people in. But apparently there had been discussions. Uh, he also said that Stephanie McMahon invited him to WrestleMania on the Sunday, put him in a suite, and then came by to say hi. He got the royal treatment. Yeah, he and then... The Full on everything. She apparently had a lot of nice things to say about GCW as well. I love the idea and the image that Stephanie McMahon is going to be those little yeah. bingo holes that have been <laughs> like the small. Like. It could it could just be a, a, a McMahon family trait though, because apparently Vince used to do this too when he yeah. meet new wrestlers. He'd be like, oh, "I love your work. I love yeah. your work." Sit down. He'd never met them or see them before. Like, like <laughs> no roped barbed wire Suzuki riddle matches from years ago. Yeah. Blood sport. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, WWE, GCW, it's not a relationship that I ever expected to potentially flourish. No, it, it's, it's, a, it's weird. I mean, I never expected ICW to mm, work with WWE, well, and they're yeah. just as violent. Well, that's it. I, I, there could be a, a lot of this sort of stuff on the horizon as WWE mm. looks to expand its libraries. But the Bloodsport brand in particular, I don't, I don't know. That's just, I don't know why that overall is it's what just, they're it's, it's super interested in. But Bloodsports Entertainment, that's what it's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be Bloodsports Entertainment. Well, it, it's out of everything they've got. It's the yeah. one where I'm the most like, really? Okay. Like, I would have thought Spring Break or big gay brunch would be the sort of yeah. appeal of gcw sort of more maybe well fun. maybe we could see a bit of a, a a return to the 97 setup if this is mm -hmm. all true where you know you had wwe gently feeding ecw yeah. some money a little bit of a talent exchange and xyz and bob's your uncle and you know it, it kind of it led to a bit of a an upturn for both companies mm. uh so Maybe it could be this. Maybe it could all just be nonsense. Maybe it could... I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to read into it. The next GCW show is going to be interesting. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Vince McMahon struts out. I, I, I would, I'd, I'd pay. I'd pay so much money to see that. But anyway, that's it for your first lovely weekend edition of Bumper Wrestling It's been News. a good one. I've been Sam. This has been Fraser. Thanks, Sam. And we'll be back in just a little bit, probably. A couple of hours. Yeah, a couple with of hours. The next video. Have a coffee. Yeah. See you later. Tie bye.